Hello everybody and welcome to the first section of section four uh, where we're going to be talking about URL lib with Python. So the crux and core of all interaction with the internet world is standard library URL lib, which basically stands for URL library. URL lib is there to handle your connection, reading of data, transferring of data like requests, and a whole bunch of other things. So let's go ahead and get started. So first off, we're going to need URL lib. So let's go ahead and normally you, you would just import URL lib. However, to do the most basic form of connecting to a server, you really only need to do import URL lib dot request because we're going to just be making a request. So if you're not f familiar with what a request is, it is just like it sounds. It's a request for data from a server. So URL lib is going to request for data on port 80 by default, which is also the default port for HTTP or even HTTPS data. This is exactly what your browser does when you type in a URL in your address bar. It makes a request for the data available at that address, which is actually an IP address. Um, and people just simply use domains because they're easier to remember. But if you know the IP address of your favorite website, you can actually type that instead. And it will take you to the website in most cases. So, for example, I can even show you. So we can open up the command prompt. So cmd.exe or bash shell, whatever. And to find out the IP address of whatever website you happen to use, what you would type in is you would just ping and then the website. So let's do Google. So ping google.com and it, this is their IP address, 74, 125, 21, and 113. So then I can move that and then we can actually go to that domain. So right now I'm on google.com, but we can also go to their website, 74, 125, 21, 113. Hit enter. Turns out that's also google.com. Subsequently, if you wanted to go to a port, you would do a colon and then 80 for port 80. And again, that works. But what if you tried to do like port, I don't know, 200? Okay. We're seeing it's taking a while. I guess it's going to try for a good amount of time, but this is actually going to fail. So anyway, to continue building a request, I'll just move this aside for now, but it's going to fail. So <laughs> to continue making a request, we can do just simply rec. And sure enough, by the way, there you go. So the connection timed out, so it just didn't happen. So we can close this for now. So request, and then we can build the request like so. So request or rec for request equals URL lib dot request dot URL open. And then we can specify what we want to open. Well, let's just open Google. So HTTPS colon slash slash www.google.com. So that's the URL we want to open. And then we can do the following. We can simply do a print rec dot read. So it's like we've opened a file, right? So when we make a request, we get a whole bunch of information. But to read up on just like the information that we're looking for, we can use a dot read. So let's go ahead and run that. And here is our output. Now, notably, this is pretty ugly output. <laughs> right. What we're looking at here is just the source code to the website. So, for example, let me pull up Google.com. And to view the source code of any website, usually you can do it right click and then view page source or you can do control U if you're using Chrome. And here's our source. So undoubtedly, you know, that's kind of what we're looking at here is just this big mess of data. Now, of course, as time goes on, we can figure out how to pull information out of here that we're actually interested in because obviously this is this means nothing to most people it doesn't really carry any value but there's data within here that carries value and then you know maybe you want to search google for you know some results or something like that you can do that and then there's you know maybe you want to make a request maybe you want to submit some data to google or something like that or maybe you're you know trying to get paragraph data from a website and you're trying to pull just that data, there's things that we can do to pull simply, you know, based on tags in HTML. So even though this doesn't look very structured, it turns out HTML is actually very highly structured. So this, this doesn't make much sense to us, but to our browser, it built this, right? That's what our browser does is it actually, when our browser visits a website, this is what it sees, but then 
it takes this code and basically runs this HTML and creates this. So eventually we can get some pretty useful stuff out of it. We just need to learn how to read this and, and what more we can do with URL lib, but we will get there. So anyways, that's it for just the brief introduction to URL lib, but we've got a lot more to cover with URL lib, so stay tuned for that.